Baga 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 ba. Just trying out some new entrances. Liven it all up and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 how's it going? How we doing? I hope that entrance was cool for y'all. Don't know what it was, just kind of came out of nowhere. But needless to say, here we are. We're back. And we're back better than ever for book talk number three. And I've got some good news for you, folks. Two books. Two books. I'm talking about two books. <laughs> All right, for the first one, and I'll explain why I did two books, How to Lie with Statistics by Daryl Huff. Simple, short read. That's why I paired it with the great, the late, the never out of date, Freakonomics. This is, this is a, uh, this is a golden ticket. This is like, what's his nuts in, in the Wonka factory getting that golden ticket? Charlie, holy shit, how do you forget that? It's in the fucking title. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Well, so, I'm going to start with this one, How to Lie with Statistics. Reason being, this is a very simple book if you don't understand statistics, but you... Many levels you, I could reference there, but on, a, on the big, biggest level... If you want to use statistics in your everyday life and understand what statistics mean when you read them, um, if you read the news, if you read anything, Twitter, I mean, it's everywhere. News is everywhere now. So if you read anything and you're reading statistics, this book can really help you understand what you're, what you're reading because there's an issue and I think it's being solved. Mass media is the norm now, so we're, we're more informed. But for a long time, statistics have always been almost like in a very non-scientific structured sentence, biasedly, biased in an unbiased way. So it's like they're not stepping out of the realms of, of the experiment, but they're manipulating the numbers so the percentages look favorable to whatever concept that they maybe may want not necessarily saying the people who conduct the studies and stuff but how you report the statistic essentially is what um this would kind of give you a very broad quick dive in dive out you know put the toe in the water test the test the fucking temperature um and, and the temperature is pretty hot is, is what i'm getting at you know what i'm saying so it's a really fun one to just start out with, and then if, if, if it blows your fucking mind, like I'm sure it does with every single person that picks it up, unless you're super, super ignorant. The next book, Freaking Fucking Nomics. I inserted the fucking. This book is out of this world. It is basically, take this book, get that structure, you got your, you got your foundation, and then you read this book, you can apply it to real life stories and you understand what's happening because you read that first book. This book is mind fucking blowing. It basically pulls two seemingly random things, but run through specific scientific processes, shit like that. There is, and I want to be careful here because I, the, the book talks about correlation versus causation. And I don't know if they are using examples that have that are proven causation, or if it's just like, like these. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I would assume I would assume the author. It's been a while. In my defense, it's been a while. It's been a long time actually, and I just like to read one book, get it done, take what I take with it, and then move. And then, I mean, someday I should probably come back and read this, but nonetheless takes like crazy crazy ones um and either either uses examples to show how it could mean this but it's like hypothetical um and or like uses real life causation examples of of this happening and then this happening and they are directly like related it's it's it, it's like proof 
Um, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't want to throw those words around. I'm not a scientist, but one example I will give is, and it's really interesting. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it, but it is the abortion, um, legislation back in the shit, I don't know, eighties or something like that. Maybe earlier than that, but regardless of, I mean, you can look it up, but essentially it would be like, uh, free economics, abortion and crime it's like information, whatever, Google that shit. But basically, um, there was legislation on abortion that made it illegal. And then, um, a statistic of increased crime 30 years later, you kind of run those numbers. Um, they basically create, not create, but like find a causation that abortion can lead to more crime. And then it says it's due to um, women not having the ability to decide if they are capable of raising a child, depending on the circumstances that are in, which then leads to everyone having to have a baby and like immoral and, and bad situations for babies to end up in when abortion is a viable route, um, is kind of the poll, political poll, I guess, is what I, I, I found from, and then I'm sure like the facts kind of portray is what I believe. Um, but so basically you have a ton of um individuals and i think it, a lot of it was like um there was a lot of single um mothers with males was like almost maybe maybe he said it on me you know what i'm saying um like the the biggest like here's where we see this direct relationship um and it's because of like lack of father potentially um, but then I know I read in the book about how it it's like the concept of children, single parent home, not as good, not as good parenting, especially if they're younger, like, and then you just get, um, yeah, it's just downhill from there. And that's where crime comes in. Um, because that's just like the, the evolution of that, that, that concept or circumstance. Um, so it's, yeah, you can look it up. I butchered it. I'm sure. Um, I'm just here, you know, but either way that it, it takes concepts like that and breaks them down for you. So you can see how like the shit works, you know, basically statistics, economics, sociology, psychology, like all this crazy shit. I should just read this fucking book again. Now that I'm thinking about it, Whew. it's killer. It, there's so much shit in it. It's literally amazing. Um, but it's, yeah, um, really can maybe bring a different outlook on statistics as well. That's what it did for me. Um, because you see statistics in real world. And then I directly remember sitting in math class in high school being like, this isn't fucking anything. I'm never going to use this in my life. <laughs> it's not what I sounded like in middle school, but, or high school, whenever I took the shit whenever I bitched about the shit. Um, but, and then you get to see how it, oh, it kind of does. And it's kind of important to know it, especially when like you're basing your, um, I would say as a, as a populist, we should base our opinions and perspectives on, um, like facts, you know, like there's, there's a reason there's sociology, psychology, economics, this and the others because people have dedicated their lives to studying those realms. So why would we not listen to what that's saying and then just follow that? Like that, you know, I don't know. But you read these books, those two in particular, they're easy, quick reads too. And basically you just fucking, you learn how to understand statistics a little bit deeper than you would have if you didn't. And it's important because um, statistics get thrown around a lot. I mean, shit, any sports fan knows that ESPN just is digging for that shit. Like, wicky wacky wonky motherfucking statistics all day on the screen of that ch channel. Any sports channel. They just, there's so much data now. They just have fucking statistics out the wazoo. Like, there's records for everything. Big record books when I was a kid used to be like Guinness. Guinness World Records, Ripley's Believe It or Not type shit like that. Hard to hold a record. Or like, and then I guess in sports too, it was like very broad, big, big records. And now it's like, they're pulling out some random ass fucking statistics about like X, Y, Z in a, a B and C scenario. This 
dude holds the record for that and it's like what are we what are we doing what are we doing but yeah and and i mean we live in a big data world now everything you do is being fucking used as some sort of leverage for some sort of company or person to market to you to get in front of you to um create i mean that's how the internet instagram works you like certain things they're gonna algorithmically pull data and connect you to the two things and you're gonna see some random shit that you might like and then boom that's you that's everywhere i mean we have so much data as far as society goes that we could almost call it like we are you could i don't know like you could almost like say you're recording your own life right now like and you could just pull back your data and understand how you've gotten like we have a really weird footprint on our on our lives now wow and this is me tripping out this is what i this is what exactly what i wanted to happen in these series is books that just bring out the most absurd and outrageous futuristic conversation but it just kind of makes sense and if you're not with me i'm sorry we can link up later put the points together but where i am i'm at, I'm, I'm there <laughs> i'm there i'm i'm on mars with elon musk <laughs> nah um but the whole point is like now we have so much big data data every day of every concept that basically we're creating these constructs of data built on like psychology and that type of shit and like so now should we not kind of know almost everything question mark does that question make sense i don't think it does i think that's too that was too far out there but either way statistics learn it know it Get a broad, broad consensus of it so you can understand the way percentages are given and in what manner they are pointing to. Because that's another thing it talks about is like the play on words and how you write words in a certain manner with a statistic sitting sit, it's in a specific spot. Then it can mean two completely different things. But if you don't, if you just clickbait that shit, you're probably going to miss the, 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 the proper meaning or something like that. So... Uh, I don't know. I guess it's coming to in a conclusion of there's so much data in the world that it's almost impossible to deny statistics, but that requires everyone, people, anyone who wants to entertain themselves with that realm of knowledge must understand how to read the statistic and how it was come about. And Freakonomics and how to lie with how to lie with statistics, how to lie with statistics by Daryl Huff, and Freakonomics by Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner. And yeah, that's a motherfucking apple on the outside, orange on the inside. You ain't never had that shit. Get out of my face. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Book talk number three in the books. I'd like to thank my sponsors. Um, Hybrid Gummies by District Edibles. I got the cab on backwards. Delicious stuff. Hard hitter. Childproof. Oh, sorry for yelling. Childproof is broken. Um, and then I would also like to thank my, my sponsor, Polaroid. Thank you. Um, wouldn't happen without those guys. So I appreciate all the support. And th 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 that's all, folks.